Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons and Dragons. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more, and like and subscribe for hotter combos next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Miles Brower from Sonic the Hedgehog, also known as Tails the Fox, or in Ireland, Kylometer. Perfecting my passion, thanks for asking. Couldn't slow down, so we had to crash it. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need a tail. Second, we need another tail. Those will both help us fly. Since you're all about the power of two, we'll also get a biplane. I didn't know planes felt attraction, but good for the tornado. Finally, you need to keep up with Sonic, or at least kind of keep up with Sonic. I don't think anyone can join the Hedgehog Gang if you can't break the sound barrier. But if you don't want to break your computer with an excessive amount of cookies, why don't you check out today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN? Surfshark is a virtual private network designed to keep your browsing experience smooth and speedy. Like I mentioned earlier, it protects you from cookies, but it also protects you from viruses hackers, identity thieves, and corporations. All that protection is good, but you can also use Surfshark recreationally. They've got servers all over the world that you can use to disguise your IP address and pretend your computer is in another country. That lets you get around region-blocked content, so you can always watch what you want to watch and expand the library of every streaming service you use. Surfshark works on an unlimited number of devices with only one subscription. That means browsers, smartphones, tablets, gaming consoles, it's all there with one subscription. And you can save some money on that subscription if you check out the link in the description below. You'll get 83% off and three free months when you use offer code 2 at checkout. So check out the link in the description and improve your browsing experience today. Now, back to the video. For stats, we're using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. Intelligence will be number one. Sonic is the fast, Knuckles is the strong, and you are the smart. Amy is hammer. Dexterity next, your feet are almost as quick as your wit. Wisdom after that, animals like you, and not just the sentient anthropomorphized ones. Follow that up with charisma, sentient anthropomorphized animals like you, not just the regular ones. Constitution is a bit low, you tend to die if you don't have money, so tails is an American, good to know. We'll dump strength though. You have machines to do heavy lifting for you, or knuckles, either or. There still ain't a fox race, there's cats, there's rabbits, but that's fine. I like custom lineage anyway. A big piece of this for later, you can be a small sized creature, jot that down. Grab the mobile feat, adding 10 to your movement speed. Creatures you attack with a melee attack can't make opportunity attacks against you, and you can dash over difficult terrain without a movement penalty. That makes sense, your fasted method of running is actually flying very close to the ground. Bump your intelligence with your two free points, take persuasion for your skill of choice, and build your own background for acrobatics and animal handling. There are backgrounds for inventors, but what's more inventive than building your own? Speaking of building things, we'll kick things off as an artificer, giving you two skills from the artificer list like Arcana and Investigation to make the use of your big brain. Metaphorically, of course, you still have a tiny little fox head. You're a magical tinkerer, letting you put tiny magical effects into tiny non-magical items, a puff of smoke, a little smell, or a sound. Fun flavor stuff. You also get spells and cantrips. Thorn Whip is a melee spell attack that deals 1d6 piercing damage and pulls a creature 10 feet closer to you with a 30 foot range. Whoops, the first spell you get is from the Sonic Boom era. Wasn't a goal, but we can grab it, so we might as well. The cartoon is fun. Message lets you whisper to a creature within 120 feet of you, and they can whisper back to you. Cell phones are always nice. I'd imagine things get a little loud when you're flying a plane with your head sticking out of the cockpit. For first level spells, Long Strider adds 10 feet to your movement speed. You won't be quite as fast as Sonic, so you probably won't get gold at the Olympics. But I've read enough fan stories to know that Tails has no problem going home with silver. Featherfall lets you protect up to five falling creatures from taking falling damage so you can use it on yourself sonic knuckles amy shadow and silver oh i didn't realize there was a character named silver that makes the long strider explanation kind of awkward totally accidental second level artificers get infusion special toys that you can use on yourself or share with your friends enhanced arcane focus adds one to the attack rolls of a spell casting focus and lets you ignore half cover to thorn whip around a corner repeating shot makes a ranged weapon magical adds one to the attack rolls and you never have to reload it for a gatling gun on the tornado enhanced weapon adds one to the attack and damage rolls of a weapon. Eventually, this one will scale up too, so it could be a nice gift for Amy. If the writers won't give her anything, you might as well. Sending stones are little rocky talkies. You can cast sending between for another option for a cell phone. Talking to your friends is fun. Third level artificers can choose a specialty. Battlesmiths get a steel defender, a medium sized creature that's got a bunch of stats. You can check them out in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything or the Eberron book. Explaining them takes a little bit of time, but you command it with a bonus action. It can attack, it can defend you. That's in the name, that makes sense. It doesn't have a flying speed. 
speed at the moment, unfortunately, but since it's medium, you can mount it to get a better vantage point, and because riding around on a metal buddy is fun. You also get battle ready, letting you use your intelligence modifier for magical weapons, like your repeating shot, if you want to mount your turret to your plane, before it becomes a plane. You also get two exclusive spells. Heroism makes a creature immune to frightening and gives them your intelligence modifier in temporary HP at the start of their turns for a little refreshing shield. Shield adds five to your AC as a reaction for a literal techno shield, whatever you like to use, up to you. Fourth level artificers get an ability score improvement, round up your intelligence and wisdom modifiers since odd numbers don't actually do anything for you anyway, and more wisdom will be helpful later. No spoilers though. Fifth level battlesmiths get an extra attack, letting you make two attacks instead of one with your action. With repeating shot, you don't even have to worry about the loading property. The idea of a Sonic character having a gun may seem a bit out there 30 years ago, but now, yeah, they all have guns. You can also cast second level spells. Warding Bond will be better later. For now, it lets you pick a creature to protect, giving them plus one to their AC and saving throws and resistance to all damage while they're within 60 feet of you. The only caveat is that you also take the damage they do, and you do not have a lot of health. Again, not super great right now. Enlarge Reduce could be more helpful, letting you make a creature one size larger or smaller. Larger creatures get advantage on strength checks and saves, and an extra d4 of damage to their attacks with weapons. Put it on the Steel Defender, and you can drive while Sonic stands and waits to jump on stuff. That's that's how planes work, for sure. Making a creature smaller forces a wisdom saving throw on them. Not really a Tails thing. Just make sure that the tornado is big enough for two people. Sixth level artificers get tool expertise, doubling your proficiency bonus with skills you're proficient with. That's tinkerers, thieves, smiths, and another of your choice. Maybe calligraphy to have more power than the chaos emeralds? Just a suggestion. Further infusions at this level, ring of water walking lets you move across water without falling in, probably because you're just running so fast. That's how it works for Monk, but obviously we're not going to go with Monk using a mostly intelligence-based character. That would be bananas. Spell refueling ring lets you recover a spell slot of third level or lower once per day. Third level spells are going to be very important to you. You're probably going to use this every time you can. Seventh level artificers get flash of genius, letting you add your intelligence modifier to an ability check or saving throw of a creature within 30 feet of you an amount of times per long rest equal to your intelligence score. Hopefully you can convince Sonic not to blast so much further ahead of you. That way you can help him out. Eighth level artificers get another ability score improvement. Capping off your intelligence modifier will make your flashes better and help you flash Sonic more often as well. Flash of genius to help Sonic. Ninth level battlesmiths get arcane jolt, or I guess your tornado does. That lets you add 2d6 force damage to one of its attacks or heal a creature within 30 feet of it 2d6 after it makes an attack. Either of those options can pop an amount of times per long rest equal to your intelligence modifier. Either have the tornado use first aid equipment or just give it a boost in firepower. But more importantly, this is the level that can make tails and the tornado fly with the spell fly. That gives a creature a 60 foot flying speed for up to 10 minutes depending on your concentration. I'm deciding to use the fly spell for a couple of reasons. One of them is it gives you the ability to put it on the tornado too, but also because tails flies in short bursts rather than the pretty much permanent flying speed of winged boots. He also flies really, really fast. For that, maybe you want the haste spell, letting you double your movement speed, add two to your AC, give you advantage on dexterity saving throws, and an extra action to dash, disengage, hide, or make one more action, or make one more attack. It's so many great buffs, but unfortunately, no flying speed. So you'll have to pick and choose. Maybe go with fly since there isn't as much of a penalty to that one, with haste costing you an action and reaction after it drops in a minute, or you lose concentration. Worth noting, the boosts from mobile and long strider apply to both of these speeds as well. Hopefully it helps you keep up with the blue blur. If you just want to rain down hellfire from the tornado though, Conjure Barrage is free on the Battlesmith list, letting you force a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 60 foot cone, failing not to take 3d8 damage and half damage on a success. 3d8 may seem a little low for a third level spell, and it is, but the area is massive. Spray and pray, baby. 10th level artificers are magical item adepts, letting you tune up to four magical items at once. I have an idea for how you can fly without dropping third level slots on fly. You can pair a couple of these magical items together to kind of give yourself a flying speed. If you do boots of striding and springing, which triple your jump distance and the ring of jumping to cast the jump spell at will for nine times your jump distance with both of them active at the same time. That'll make your horizontal jump distance 72 feet and your vertical jump distance 18. Obviously, the fly spell is still there if you want a flying flying speed, but if you only needed to clear gaps, this is some great mobility. 11th level artificers get spell storing item, letting you store a spell of second level or lower into an object, then other creatures can cast that spell through that item using your intelligence modifier, an amount of times per long rest equal to double your intelligence modifier. Even better, the creature who casts the spell is the one concentrating on it. You have two fantastic options. Warding Bond getting cast by your battle buddy gives you resistance to all damage while it's up and plus one to your AC and saving throws. Enlarge Reduce would permanently make your tornado a large sized creature and you could still cast fly on it and concentrate on both. So now you can make it fly and ride with your best pal at the same time. That's right, I said pal. I don't think Sonic and Tails should
stupid date because Sonic has so much more chemistry with Shadow. Obviously, Tails and Bean the Dynamite belong together. I'm sorry, it's just so obvious. 12 level artificers get another ability score improvement. Why not invest in dexterity to boost your AC since you don't really need anything else? Battlesmith is the least mad class in the game. It puts everything on your intelligence and makes you an immortal god with a robot friend. Dexterity can't hurt though. 13th level artificers get 4th level spells. I really don't care about any of these. Freedom of movement lets you ignore any effects that would slow you down. Difficult terrain, paralyzation, etc. But I think the best way to avoid difficult terrain would just be casting fly at 4th level for 2 creatures with a flying speed. Now you can cowabunga out of the tornado and probably fly faster since you have the mobile feet. But carrying Sonic could be an issue with your low strength. That's what the tornado is for. 14th level artificers are magical item savants, letting you tune up to 5 magical items at once. You also get 2 more infusions. Bracers of defense add 2 to your AC when you're not wearing armor, which is helpful when your outfit is shoes and gloves. Speaking of shoes, forget the boots of striding and springing that was temporary until we could get the boots of speed. That will let you double your movement speed by clicking your heels together, and not specifically a running speed. So long strider and mobile pair together with fly to make your base flying speed 80 feet, which you can double with the boots of speed to become 160, then dash with your action to clear 320 feet in a single round. It's slower than Sonic, but yours can go vertical, and going vertical is pretty good. 15th level battlesmiths get improved defender, bumping defender's arcane jolt to 4d6, adding 2 to its AC, and it deals 1d4 plus your intelligence modifier when it deflects an attack. It's weird that they call it a plane, because to me, it's super. I spelled it like plane like normal in the script, but that doesn't really translate into, th that's what I meant though, that's the joke. 16th level artificers get another ability score improvement, keep working that dexterity, it's gonna make you a better monk after all. That's because we're jumping over to monk now, giving you unarmored defense to make your AC 10 plus your dexterity and wisdom modifier when you're not wearing armor. It would probably just be better if you wore armor, since you have proficiency and could get that enhanced defense infusion, but then you couldn't use martial arts. That'll make your unarmed attacks deal 1d4 bludgeoning damage using your dexterity modifier, and you can make another unarmed attack as a bonus action after you make one with your action. Since the mobile feat disengagement perk requires a melee attack, this will give you some better options. Not really, you could use any weapon you want that isn't heavy using your intelligence modifier, and a heavy weapon would only have disadvantage because you're small, so you can really use anything, um, but you, but now you can punch. Second level monks get unarmored movement, that's what we're really here for, making you 10 feet faster when you're not wearing armor, which of course stacks with long strider, mobile boots of speed, and fly for a 180 foot flying speed, which would be able to get you in and out of the standard range of a longbow. You can go even further with key points you can use to do cool fox stuff, like step of the wind, letting you dash or disengage as a bonus action to go 360 feet into the air after making your attacks with your action. Flurry of Blows lets you make two unarmed attacks with your bonus action instead of one for a total of four attacks per round, though that does mean you're sticking with only 180 feet of free disengagement. It's such a weakness. Patient Defense lets you dodge as a bonus action, giving creatures attacking you disadvantage and giving you advantage on dexterity saving throws. Dashing is much more fun. You're really, really fast. Third level monks don't have to choose between attacking and disengaging if you choose the Drunken Master Tradition, giving you the Drunken Technique. That lets you disengage for free after you make a flurry of blows with 10 extra movement speed, so 200 feet of free rocketing into the sky. You also get to deflect missiles, letting you reduce the damage of incoming ranged attacks by 1d10 plus your monk level and dexterity modifier. If you drop it all the way to zero, you can spend a key point to throw the ammo back. Just reducing the damage is huge, since anyone without a flying speed of over 150 feet isn't going to be able to hit you with a melee attack. If your tornado also has warning bond up on you, that cuts the damage even lower. Amazing. Our capstone is the fourth level of monk to get slow fall, letting you reduce falling damage by five times your monk level as a reaction. Feather fall already made falling less of a hazard, but now you don't even have to worry about that if you don't have your spell slots left. You also get one last ability score improvement, letting you cap off your dexterity modifier so you can spin dash as strong as you use your magical weapons. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you are a master of hit and run fighting, with massive flying speed, meaning that nothing is ever going to hit you with a melee attack. You also have a battle buddy that can cast a spell on you with spell storing item to make you resist all damage for the first 87 points of damage you take, also giving you 20 AC and plus one to every saving throw. That's if you don't have it battling with you and just want to send it 60 feet higher than you to tank damage. Finally, you're resourceful, with a repeating shot weapon that never runs out of ammo and unarmed attacks to fight up close if you need to. For weaknesses, you don't have a lot of HP, with barely over 100, meaning that even with warding bond, you might not last that long. You're also rocking a lot of concentration spells and can only have one up at a time, or two with the battle buddy, but that's still only two and one has to be of second level or lower. Finally, your speed is excessive. The monk levels gave you more, but you could have just gone to level 20 of Artificer and gotten their god tier capstone. But you're already kind of god tier. If nothing can catch you in the air, 
air, you don't have to worry about them. Fly in, fly out, and carry the team wherever they need to go in the air. Just watch out for enemies who can also fly fast. It could be a problem to have a flying rouge on your back. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more, and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.